Hey data fans, Reed here. Today I want to walk you through how to analyze and be able to review the performance analyzer data that gets exported into a JSON file. Now the report that you see in front of us here is what I've done where I'm actually comparing two versions of a client report, one that they originally had and then the optimized version where I reduced the number of objects on the page, but also as you can see in the upper left here, the load time went down from nearly a minute only to about 10 seconds for the page. So I actually have a template file that I can provide you that essentially lets you in Power Query point to your two export performance analyzer data, automatically normalize the data, cleans it up and populate the visuals on the report page that you saw just a minute ago. So I'm gonna hop into Power BI and show you how to go through the Power Query and then leverage this template. So to start this conversation off, I wanna review the report output. I've made a fairly basic report in here that breaks it down on the left into page load time and on the right to object count. Now again, I'm just comparing two versions of a report page that I essentially updated and optimized. So over here, we can see the original page had 58 seconds labeled as original. I labeled the new version of the report as optimized for that report page that I updated. That was down to 10. And then we have deltas over here that will be green if it's lower red if it's higher, but we lost about 48 seconds or 82% of the total load time. Visualize down here in the top level for total page load time on the top chart, and then actually by visual type down here, ones where they're shared, we can see that there was a lot of gauges and card uh, timing that took place, and then some new ones as well, but it at least lets the association compare between the two. Over on the right, Similar concept, but we have the number of unique objects in the entire report. So the visual ID is between the text boxes, the shapes, everything else that's on the page that represents one of the objects that was added to that page. And I reduced that from 123 down to 48 and a similar breakout by visual type below and also cards there at the top. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna come up and open the Power Query Editor. And I wanna walk through the queries that I have into here and how you can leverage this. So I have two, sections over here under staging queries, original data and optimized data. If you just wanna use this file that you can find on my blog files page as a template, all you have to do is come to the original, which will be your first export from your performance analyzer data. And if you are wondering how to use that, so the performance analyzer is built into Power BI. That's from the view tab. If you turn on performance analyzer, click start recording, refresh your page. When you click export on this button here and save that file, that will be the performance analyzer file we are comparing against. So again, I did an original page that my client built and the optimized page after I tuned it up. So those two files are what we'll be pointing to for the power queries. So that original data, you just come up to source and all you need to do is select the gear icon and then you would find the new file path wherever that first file is located. You park it here and these transformations will go through. Similarly, for the optimized data, you come to source, update the query here, and it will populate into this. Now, I'll walk through the steps and show you what I did to clean up the data because you can't just review the data initially. There is gonna be some duplicate data, some subtotal rows and some other stuff we need to get rid of. Now, these first four steps, converted to table, expanded events, events one and events metrics, all of that was done automatically just by pointing to the CSV files. So it basically just compiled it up into here for us. But what I wanna do is only keep the columns that I care about, which is gonna be the event name, the start and end period, what the visual title was, what the visual ID was, so then a unique identifier for it, and the visual type. I then made sure to change the type of event start and end to date time, because I'm gonna be identifying the duration, how many seconds happen between them. Now, one thing you might notice is that there's a lot of blanks in here. Now, left logo, everything below that is actually related to the left logo visual or this visual ID. So I filled down the visual type, the visual ID, and the visual title to make sure that all the associated rows would make sense with that. I then added the duration, which is simply column A minus B. So I added a custom column. I said N minus start, which gives the total duration and made sure to set that as a duration type. And then I used a function called calculating total seconds so I can transform. And I went to total seconds, which added this step here, which now gives me the total seconds elapsed for that. Now here's an important thing to do. So we have an event name over here on the right. There's a couple things we need to get rid of. Number one, I don't need any rows that don't have duration. So I removed the nulls from that, but also there's another one that we want to be considered of. Visual container lifecycle. That's actually the grand total 
weeks time that elapsed for that particular visual. So that is the sum of query, load, render, all these other ones underneath it. So if we kept this, we're keeping a total row and then we'd be duplicating the data that we have in here. So I remove both of those. I get rid of the visual container lifecycle row and I also get rid of any nulls from duration. This now means that this column when summed will give us the appropriate amount of time per visual. Now, another thing that we're gonna do is get rid of anything left remaining that we don't need and let's rename the columns. So we have event name, visual title, visual ID, type, and duration. And now there's a little bit of cleanup that I wanna do personally is the visual type. I want it to actually be spaced in a few other things. So one thing that I did is I split by um, upper to lower. So if you go to split column, lowercase to uppercase is what I meant to say, that splits these values up and allows for spaces to occur. So I split this by delimiter initially, but then I merged it back, which will then give me actual spacing between everything. Then I capitalized it. So now I have a bit more of a readable list of um, object types that are in here and that will work with any of your data, but it's just gonna be a bit more printable, readable on the category labels and the visuals in my report. And then finally, <clears throat> I added a report version in here as well. So that's what I did with these two, the original and optimized, and my fact report comparison, what that is, is that is unioning both of these together. So I am getting combined data from this query and that is down here, and that is just an append of those two. So that's how I have one fact table that has both versions, and then I have a dim visual table that has the ID, the type, and the visual title in it, just to put it into a bit of a star schema design. Now, closing back out of this, there's one thing that I wanna mention from this perspective. That's the fact that when you sum up this duration column right here, just to give you a bit of insight on how the performance data works, the longest second in here for any particular visual will be the actual time the page took to load because they queue up behind each other. So if you summed this number together, you would actually be getting an inflated number. So the true actual page load time would be a measure that would be closer to the max seconds per visual. So we'll actually do any max X of all of the seconds of any particular visual and that longest that any visual took to load, that means that's the last visual to load on the page which means that was the overall page load time because they will load at different times with each other. So if you stack all those together and again, sum it, you don't actually get a real world number. If I just simply, just to show you, if I was to come over to here and just put the seconds into this visual instead, get rid of my performance analyzer. If I just put seconds in here, I would actually be getting 442 and 146, which is obviously way too high for a page load typically. So that's why I did the max X, which is giving me the real world true number of page load time because that was the longest visual and last visual to load for the page. But hopefully this is something that helps you understand a bit of how to dissect the performance analyzer data. There are a few steps that need to go into cleaning it up and again, getting rid of some of those subtotal rows, filling down the data to make sure the labels are mapped to the right rows. But you now have a template potentially that you can use to actually compare A and B and in this case, see how much of a performance improvement you can have when you are updating some of the reports. And it gives you a nice thing to give back to anybody that you are returning this report or data model to. But hopefully you can um, implement this in some of your work environments. If you have any comments, as always, drop them down below in the comment section. Check out some of our related content here on the upper left. And as always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to help the channel grow. And I will see you in my next video.